coming down, coming down. It's divine justice coming down. Divine justice coming down, coming down. Divine justice coming down. Well, I've got uh, Bob McGinnis, Robert, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis uh, with us today. And uh, he has been kind enough to give me 10, 15 minutes of his time. So, Bob, welcome and thank you for uh, allowing me to, to visit with you today. Uh, my privilege. Thanks, Chris. Uh, I had just a couple of questions. One of them was, I guess, the thousand pound elephant in the room, the Trump assassination attempts. We've had two of them now. And I saw somebody posted a meme. It's official. Trump has actually had more assassination attempts than Kamala Harris has had live press interviews. So uh, I, I found that somewhat humorous, but it's really not funny. I mean, the man's life is in, in uh, grave danger. And I've been watching Dan Bongino, who you, I'm sure you're aware of who he is. Yeah. And um, he has been talking about the graveness of it. Do you have an opinion on that or, or do you have a, a thought on what? needs to happen well it's disappointing they didn't have a full um, cadre of you know, secret service personnel up until now you know i would have thought after the pennsylvania incident they would have yeah. upgraded it and not waited to the second attempt you know it's clear that uh, the antagonism from the left against mr trump uh, is I think inciting a lot of these uh, copycat or you know people that are willing to you know take this type of action, and, and it will happen again. Um, but fortunately, they have uh, given him a full complement of uh, Secret Service, and I'm sure that you know th these people are beginning to get the message that they've got to take this seriously. So um, hopefully, it won't happen again. But uh, you know, there are a lot of people out there that don't like him. And as a result, you know, they're they're taking uh, actions that are just uh, not something that make any of us very comfortable. Well, and one thing that I made me, I thought about it was both of these guys were uh, nobodies, uh, no specific training. And we've heard talk about Iran and other uh, people wanting to assassinate him. So. God help us if somebody that will well trained militarily uh, came in and wanted to take him out. It, it looks like that would be uh, taking candy from a baby. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that, Chris. Uh, yeah, th these guys didn't demonstrate any real uh, capability. Uh, there are people out there that are incredibly well trained that uh, could make that happen if, if they really wanted to. Um, but. Uh, to this point, uh, it hasn't, and I'm hoping that uh, these people are getting serious about protecting me. Okay, great. All right, the war in Ukraine. Um, I read an article uh, that the European Parliament had passed a passed a binding resolution uh, allowing Ukraine to use long-range missiles, which they're going to be provided by us. And I and if I'm not mistaken, Britain. Uh, what is the risk in that? Yeah, Zelensky uh, has said that he has uh, a plan to use long range weapons in deep inside of Russia. And of course, uh, Vladimir Putin and his surrogates have indicated that uh, further intervention into Russia, especially deep against strategic targets, uh, could invite a response from a use of a tactical, uh, tactical nuclear weapon. Uh, they've been re-looking at their current policy about uh, tactical nukes. Uh, and so I, I don't dismiss that outright. Um, you know, they, they were, there have been a number of people that are very close to Putin that have you know, indicated uh, that this is something they, they want him to consider doing. Um, so given the, the calculations that they've made thus far, and of course they've turned their industrial base uh, into one that is going to ratchet up the, the increase of their uh, munitions, uh, their weapons, and of course uh, they're also increasing their uh, draft essentially, their conscription, uh, upping it from what they've had in the past. So it would appear as if, um, you know, Putin and his surrogates are 
planning a long term fight. And Zelensky obviously understands that uh, he can't do this alone, that he needs the West and in particular the United States and uh, the weapons we've been providing. Uh, I suspect that uh, now that they've been given F-16s, uh, they've been given HIMARS, uh, uh, and I think what they really want are ATACMs, which are uh, capable of reaching out almost 300 yards or 300 miles. And of course, uh, we provide those. But uh, there are others, the French, uh, the uh, the Brits, and a number of other countries that could provide uh, similar capabilities uh, that could deeply um, increase uh, the veracity and uh, the numbers of targets that they would seek. You know, we've known that they've used drones uh, downtown Moscow against, uh, you know, the personal residence of Putin. Um, but I suspect that the next round could be far more serious. And I do believe that uh, what Putin has been saying is that, you know, we're complicit. We, the NATO, the United States are complicit of supporting Zelensky. And Zelensky wouldn't be as capable of reaching deep into Russia without our, our go ahead. And so uh, they're they're pointing their fingers at us. And, and this could get out of hand if we're not careful. Well, that is what I kind of wanted to get from you uh, is, could this lead to World War III? It, is Putin just saber rattling? Is he just making idle threats? Or, or do you think that he is actually capable, knowing just about what that would you know, entail, uh, throwing some, some nuclear weapons either at Ukraine or possibly at the U.S. or even Brit? the Brits over there or Europe. Is he capable of that? Well, he's capable. They had an exercise uh, in June of this year uh, in Belarus, which is, of course, north of um, Ukraine. And they have in place in a, a couple of facilities <laughs> uh, tactical nuclear weapons. And they also have Iskander, uh, which are uh, short range, could carry a tactical uh, tactical a tactical nuclear weapon as well. So uh, they have the ability. I, I don't think at this point, though, uh, that, that we're going to see a uh, an attack, a, a broader attack, uh, because he has to build up his forces. Uh, he's taken a significant losses, you know, depending upon who you believe, maybe 350,000 personnel uh, killed and wounded. And, of course, uh, many of his uh, armor units have been uh, significantly degraded. So uh, he's on a effort to increase those capabilities. Now, that doesn't mean he won't use some special operations forces against, uh, I would think, probably against the Baltic countries. Uh, he's threatened that many times. Uh, he certainly threatened uh, the Poles because of their strategic location and the fact that we have the fifth core um, that is headquarters at least stationed there that that presents a real significant uh threat against them i know the germans interestingly of course they the germans have had an election here uh, the last day or so and though uh schultz is going to maintain probably his position as spd leader uh the right in germany has really come on hard and strong and so schultz i think will will continue his efforts to strengthen uh, their military might. And uh, the Germans historically have been the strongest uh, nation in uh, that part of the world. And now they've really ratcheted up their investments. And their own training uh, a report was leaked oh, a month or two ago uh, that indicated that they saw a number of scenarios in which uh, they would become directly involved against the Russians. And, and so you have a lot of tit for tat back and forth. I, I don't think the timeline is right now. Uh, I think uh, probably two years, perhaps. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, my new book, I hope, will come out right after about the time of the inauguration, uh, which deals with World War III. Uh, and so I've, I've really looked at that pretty hard. Uh, but 
not only what the Russians will do, uh, but also what the, the Chinese, the Iranians, and the other totalitarian regimes in the world. And of course, what our abilities are. Our abilities are somewhat limited uh, be, for a variety of reasons, some of which uh, we poured uh, so much into the arsenals of the Ukrainians, and uh, they've t- been devastated in many regards themselves, but the, the rest of the world is also up arming and getting ready for something that I think all of us anticipate may happen uh, in the next couple of years. Okay, well, I, I like your timeline better than I first saw the others. That's, that's much better, and I, I was curious what we've got in just a couple of minutes. Um, where is he going to get all these men? Because if I'm not mistaken, I saw something like he wanted to add two million more, or maybe maybe I saw the wrong number, but where in the world is he going to get all these? The Russians have a little over a million on active duty. Uh, he wants to increase it by 180,000. This last okay, maybe I saw thing that I saw, uh, and that's that's a lot for a a, a shrinking population that he's yes. pulling from. So you know they they have some real challenges, uh, but surprisingly, Putin's popularity. Is not in the drain. Uh, he is, you know, he is pumping the idea that nationalism and and their right uh, to self, um, I, I suppose, protection. And given that uh, they're now being attacked by the Ukrainians, uh, he's using that to his advantage. Yeah. And of course, they have encouragement from uh, the Chinese uh, through a variety of mechanisms. So there's a lot going on there. Okay, so last last question. Um, this this uh, war between Israel and uh, Hezbollah that seems to be uh, intensifying uh, uh, with the electronics, which I thought that was uh, interesting how that that worked out. But um, I've been watching uh, an app on my phone. And it seems like every night there are hundreds of rocket attacks. And, I, and I'm assuming that Israel can only take so much before finally they said enough is enough. Well, they, they've had you know, off and on you know, significant battles with Hezbollah for, for decades, as you know, in 86 right. uh, and then uh, in 2006 and, and so forth. Um, they want to wrap up what they've got going on in Gaza. And once they wrap that up, they'll have more forces to shift to the north. Uh, I think that they're they're accelerating what they're doing in Gaza, and then hopefully that's that's only weeks away, and it will begin to die down. So we'll see. Um, but Hezbollah is has been a, a problem for a long time, and as you well know, you know what was it in '86, uh, the Marine Corps bom- bombing the barracks yes. there. And right. we've been tracking them closely. We know who these characters are. Uh, they are obviously a, a, a solid proxy of Iran. Uh, they've had, we think, by some estimates, 150,000 rockets and ballistic uh, missiles and the like at various locations. You know, it's it's really, even though the Israelis have not acknowledged being behind the uh, uh, the pager and the cell phone and the walkie-talkie issue and so forth. Yeah, likely that's true, and that demonstrates they have great intelligence, uh, and they also have great technology and influence over manufacturers. Uh, they know the the real intricacies of some of these electronic devices, uh, and that should sh- scare all of us, quite frankly. And absolutely, absolutely. We need to understand. You know, I I often I'm aware of certain yeah, demonstrations that we've given from our intelligence agencies with you know, some rather naive political leaders who didn't understand what we can actually do with these devices that we cart around on our bodies. Um, it would scare most people if they knew uh, what is within the realm of possibility. So the, the fact that they killed quite a few, I think it's good news. Uh, these are these are terribly bad people, uh, and they would kill just about anyone, uh, not only Americans, but Israelis and any other innocents that, that they thought they could get away with. So uh, it is good. But yeah, the Hezbollah war is quite possible. Uh, the Israelis are getting a bit tired of, you know, I know today I saw that there were a bunch of missiles that went into Haifa uh, mm-hmm. and those. Right. And that's that that is. Uh, 
that's an escalation. It's not, you know, it's not a couple of missiles into the Golan or a couple of missiles into some of the you know, the smaller uh, towns and villages in northern uh, Israel. When you hit I Haifa, which is a major port for the Israelis, you're beginning to really ratchet it up. So I know that they've uh, struck back uh, with uh, fighters and, and the like. Um, yeah, so th this could easily escalate. Now, is it going to escalate to a regional fight? Arguably, we're already in a regional fight. Uh, you know, it, Israelis have been all over the map. Uh, they just don't acknowledge it. Um, we're all over the map, too, uh, with forces, obviously, in Syria, Iraq, Jordan, um, Bahrain, and so forth. We work with the others as well. Uh, so it, it's a it's a hotbed of activity. It's going to continue. Uh, I, I don't see until we get, you know, really put pressure on Iran once again, you know, un, under the Biden administration, they pulled out of, uh, they tried to restart JCPOA. Uh, they, tr they, you know, lifted a lot of sanctions that had them humbled. Uh, now they have all their coffers full with uh, oil funds from the Chinese and the like. So all of this is not good news for if you want peace in the Middle East, right. uh, much less peace in Eastern Europe. And of course, meanwhile, we have a, a tr tragic situation evolving in the, in the Far East with certainly Taiwan and you know what's going on with the, the Japanese, the, the Filipinos, you know, the whole South China Sea issue. So the world is in a, a rather turbulent situation today. Well, I appreciate your timeline on that because if you listen to the media and as some of our, our brothers out there in the ministry, World War One or Three could start tomorrow. And um which and I guess anything's possible, but with your um military training, uh having been in the uh, war college and taught as far as I understand, you probably have a, a good idea of military strategy. I know that it, I was surprised to find out that the war in, in Gaza has been going on for a year now. And, uh, you know, eight months ago, I would have thought it was all going to blow up at that time. And so um, things don't always happen in our timeline the way we think. And, uh, I believe sometimes these guys have a little bit more patience than we give them credit for. And I hope that we have a little bit more uh, wisdom than sometimes we give give our leaders credit for. So, Yeah, well, I think that you're subject to the election in the fall. Um, yeah, you know, I'm not, you know, the, the Harris people, if, if they retain the White House and the Congress, um, I think things will get worse. Um, well, and yeah. that's that's my concern. Uh, she she doesn't have the. I, I don't think the 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 background uh, nor uh, the confidence. Uh, she doesn't inspire confidence, certainly. And I think our enemies who are very real and very, very dangerous have taken yes. an assessment of her and they will support everything they can to to install her in the White House rather than Mr. Trump. Uh, and that's uh, th that frightens me more than her dismal economic issues and certainly the terrible situation they've created at the border. Uh, we're we're heading in the, the absolute wrong direction. So absolutely. Um, and that just gives us more pause to stop and pray about that. Bob, I appreciate your time. Um, enjoy the rest of your vacation. Uh, I'm I'm somewhat envious of where you're at and the nice coolness of it. But uh, thank you for your time and appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Have a good day. All right. Thank you, Bob.